good morning today we will briefly discuss on the upcoming treatment for the condition called as spinal muscular atrophy and as you all know that the spinal muscular atrophy is a basically a multidisciplinary and a supportive approach is required and it includes a team that will have a pediatric or an adult neurologist respiratory physician genetist gastroenterologist palliative care physicians orthopedician rehabilitation and allied health professionals are required we'll also briefly discuss the three upcoming disease modifying treatments that have come in the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy now when it comes to the management of the spinal muscular atrophy it includes not only the disease modifying therapy it is the supportive management that's very very important in the terms of respiratory uh, uh, assessment which includes pulmonary periodic pulmonary function test need for overnight polysomnography you need to take an assessment if you require an overnight oximetry whether it is required or not and repeated respiratory tract infections have to be managed for these children so the management per se will include annual influenza vaccination airway clearance techniques non-invasive ventilations and the need for antibiotics needs to be assessed so it's very very important to give them the respiratory support in children with spinal muscular atrophy the second most important part is the nutritional problems because we know that children with spinal muscular atrophy will have swallowing difficulty so swallowing assessment signs of reflex being assessed presence of constipation all these things needs to be taken care and the nutritional supplementation optimization of the oral intake so hydration everything needs to be very comprehensively assessed and managed in children with spinal muscular atrophy children with sma are also very prone to developing contractures scoliosis and hip subluxation so it becomes extremely important to ensure that we are having mobility equipment for these children and physiotherapy spinal surgeries need to be taken uh, the call needs to be taken by the orthopedician if a spinal surgery is required for these children or not so physiotherapy st stays a very very important role in management of spinal muscular atrophy now coming very briefly to the disease modifying treatment which includes nucinersen now when it comes to nucinersen nucinersen as you can see that these are this is basically blocking the splice a uh, suppressor in the intron 7 of the smn2 so as a result of which it in uh, the the moment you have a spin rasa that is the nucinersen that's the treatment so exon skipping happens the moment the exon skipping happens what will happen is that it will start including the exon 7 in the smn2 messenger rna as a result of which the proteins that are formed are full length smn transcripts and fully functional smn proteins are produced so this is how nucinersen acts and this nucinersen drug has been fda approved and ema approved in 2016 and 2017 now in 2011 9th december the first phase 1 clinical trial of this uh, drug was done and it was delivered by an intrathecal injection and the participants were monitored for the safety and to tolerability and it had very clearly um passed that in phase 1 trial and the result supported continued development of nucinersen for sma treatment similarly there were phase 2 trials and phase 3 trials and there were no safety concerns that were raised by use of nucinersen which was there and the interim analysis of the phase 3 trials also showed that the nucinersen was very much superior to the placebo group which was primarily there now the studies have also shown that there is a continued benefit of nucinersen being initiated in the pre symptomatic stage of sma itself and with a five year cohort also they have seen that all children with three smn2 copies achieved all the uh, who monitored uh, you know motor milestones with a normal developmental frame so all the 15 children who were enrolled had achieved a sitting without the support so all these clinical trials had very very clearly supported uh, the use of nucinersen in uh, children with spinal muscular atrophy now this nucinersen commonly uh, comes by the uh, trade name of spinraza has 12 mg and it is a fixed dose regimen of 12 mg that's 
recommended regardless of the age and the weight. The first three doses should be given at a 14 day interval with a fourth dose being given 30 days after the third dose. The maintenance dose should be given once in every four months. The common reactions that have been reported include upper respiratory tract infections, lung atelectasis, constipations, back pain, post LP syndrome. So all of them were some of the common minor side effects which were reported with the Nusinersen trial, uh, Nusinersen studies which were there. So the main problem that comes with the Nusinersen is phenomenal cost and non-availability outside the clinical trials. So that becomes a challenging thing. The medication cost and the complication, uh, complicated administrations have created a lot of challenges for Nusinersen, but Nusinersen has become the standard standard of the care in children with spinal muscular atrophy. The second important uh, disease modifying treatment that has uh, uh, come up is ona Onasemnogene, that's a very important uh, gene therapy that has come and it is basically an adeno associated virus, AAV vector associated uh, with this thing that's it's, it's an AV vector which basically does not integrate into the host DNA but it is the AV vector which translocates into the nucleus and the transgene act as an episome. Now to increase the efficiency of this gene expression the uh, the AAV vector packages the double stranded GNA. So it is the gene therapy through this adenovirus associated uh, uh, therapy that helps children with spinal muscular atrophy. Similarly, uh, the, with, the, with this gene therapy, the phase one trials have shown a lot of good safety. The only thing that was concerned that was raised was AST and ALT elevation. The five-year extension um, uh, results of the phase one trial was also seen in which the 13 of the 15 patients treated uh, were enrolled in the patients and the patients who were previously treated with an IV dose of this gene therapy uh, were also recruited. The serious adverse effect occurred in eight patients, but none of them resulted in any kind of discontinuation or the death which were there. The common side effects reported include the acute respiratory failures and pneumonias which were there. So study definitely supported the long-term favorable safety profile in uh, children with the uh, treatment for this gene therapy. So the moment this gene therapy was there even the phase 3 trials showed no serious adverse effect and uh, uh, many of them had shown that the children had achieved all of them stood independently before 24 months so this zolgen jasma is uh, th that's a gene therapy that is very importantly come up as a very important uh, treatment which is there so suspension is administered over the 60 minutes with an insertion of a backup catheter prior to the administration the clinical signs and symptoms of infection should not be present in children with sma when they are being administered this gene therapy all the vials have a nominal concentration and the recommended dose is 1.1 into 10 to the power of 14 is the dose of the gene therapy that's usually given. So it's usually given over a period of 30 days with the first day, uh, 24 hours prior to the in, uh, infusion, systemic corticosteroids are usually administered. On day two, the infusion day comes when the gene therapy is administered. From day three to day 28, AST, ALT monitoring, INR monitoring becomes very, very important in these children. And uh, the, the monitoring usually happens. So this 30-day monitoring is followed by the steroid taper depending upon how the child is responding to it. Now, the third most promising treatment for spinal muscular atrophy is risdiplam. So it's an FDA approved drug in 2020. It was originally approved for the treatment of the patients more than two months of age, now approved for almost all the ages. Again, part one and part two of the Firefresh trials which were being uh, administered had shown that uh, had shown efficacy as well as the safety which were there. There are more trials that are going on which includes the sunfish trials and rain 
uh, rainbow fish trials which are going on. So Ristiplam is a drug that's to be given daily, orally. So it's a very, very promising drug for children with spinal muscular atrophy um, when it uh, comes to it. it. But it is a daily administration that is very, very important in this. And the most common adverse effects that were reported were only fever, diarrhea, and rash. And the most common adverse reactions um, in the infantile onset SMA were very similar to those which were observed in later onset of SMA. So so this resdiplam is a very promising oral drug that has come up for the treatment of uh, spinal muscular atrophy. Now, few authors have also reported switching of the therapy from neosinersen to the gene therapy, from resdiplam to the gene therapy. So all of them have also shown fairly uh, okay kind of an improvement in children with uh, spinal muscular atrophy. So to conclude, basically, we wanted to uh, ensure that the neosinersen uh, the gene therapy as well as the Ristiplam are the three important drugs that have come up in the market and it's very important to know that SMA is now treatable and it is not no longer a non-treatable disease. But yes, the respiratory support, the orthopedic support and the physiotherapy support becomes the most important part of